Come on. Your sloth awaits you, sir. What a magnificent piece. <laughs> eh, Rat? My word. Owen's done a remarkable job. He really is a splendid specimen. Yes, I thought you'd be pleased. Come through. See what I've been working on. The chimpanzee, being the highest organized four-handed ape, every difference between its anatomy and a human's is instructive. I've been For studying. example, the irrational ape has dog-like canines, used as weapons of destruction, quite unlike the masters of the animal kingdom. Yes, though... Have and the seen... human foot is of decisive taxonomic value. Our feet are made for walking upon, our hands for grasping. This brute has its hands and feet made to answer nearly the same purpose. Well, there's a striking similarity between I'm writing a book on the subject. Yeah, my brother is working on a new book, too. Come here. Let me show you what I mean. All the same pattern. The bone structure in the hands and feet were all nearly identical. The blueprint, if you will, that existed first in the creator's mind. Of that, there can be no doubt. Utter tosh! The similarity of structure indicates one thing and one thing only. An ancient common ancestor. Real flesh and blood parents. Why didn't you say so then? Hmm? You must publish your ideas, if only to establish your priority. What's holding you back? I've completed a sketch of my species theory. I believe it's a considerable step in science. If anything should happen to me... What do you mean? If I should die... Die? Charles, for goodness sake. Please, my love, it's important. If anything should happen to me, I'd like you to see to it that it gets published. Four hundred pounds should be enough to see it printed and promoted. Nothing's going to happen to you. You say here that the human eye may possibly have been acquired by gradual selection of slight, but in each case useful, deviations. Yes. That's a very great assumption, Charles. Well, if I'm wrong about that, I'm wrong about everything. My entire theory's in ruins. Can your theory account for the way my eyes and ears and hands and heart combine to reproduce the sounds that Chopin heard in his head. Isn't that a God-given gift? Well, it's given. But not, I think, by God. You're a man of science. You don't want to believe anything until it's proved. But some things are beyond proof. It would be a nightmare to me if I thought we didn't belong to each other forever in heaven. Emma was a sincere believer in the Christian plan of salvation and that those who trusted in Jesus and his resurrection from the dead would spend eternity in heaven. She saw that her husband's speculations about the origins of species and of humanity would jeopardize the Christian plan of salvation. God was being made re remote in her husband's universe. Now, if nature by itself, unaided by God, could make an eye. Then what else couldn't nature do? Nature could do anything. It could make everything. In Darwin's day, the very existence of an organ of extreme perfection like the eye was taken by many as proof of God, as proof of a designer. How else could all of the intricate organs and substructures of the eye have come together in just the right way to make vision so possible and so perfect? But it turns out the eye isn't exactly perfect after all. In fact, the eye contains profound optical imperfections. And those imperfections 
They're proof, in a sense, of the evolutionary ancestry of the eye. Eyes are imperfect because evolution does not create things the way a designer or an artist does. Natural selection simply favors random changes that make an organism more fit to survive. And imperfections in design often result from evolution's constant tinkering. One such imperfection proved traumatic for artist Valerie Young. We had just come home from a party and I saw a lot of lights flashing inside my eye, especially on the outside edge of the, of the right eye. And I thought we may be in trouble here. And it took me a while to really see that it was my, this was coming from inside my eye. Luckily my husband was with me because I wouldn't have been able to drive to the hospital. So my vision was pretty obscured. The only way I can describe it is like a, a jellyfish with lots of little bubbles in it. And it just kept turning and floating in front of my eyes. Valerie had a retinal tear. Not an uncommon problem due to the way human eyes evolved from light sensing patches of brain tissue in our ancient ancestors. In the human embryo, Eyes develop from bulges in the brain's neural tube that pinch in to form cavities. This top layer, the retina, which tore in Valerie Young's eye, contains cells that collect light. It rests against a second, darker layer that lines the back of the eye. But the two layers are not attached to one another. And when the jelly that fills the eye liquefies as we age, it can cause the retina to tear. The jelly can then seep into the space underneath, leading to a retinal detachment and, in some cases, blindness. When Valerie Young came in, her floaters were an immediate clue that she could have a retinal tear. We were able to successfully apply laser treatment in the office that day to seal it off like applying sandbags around something to wall it off so that the vitreous jelly would not get in the break and uh, detach her retina. Valerie Young's retinal tear is just one example of imperfections in the design of human eyes. Another occurs because nerve cells and blood vessels evolve to lie in front of the retina, where they interfere with its ability to form sharp images. It's like trying to take a picture through a foggy piece of glass. And the optic nerve itself evolved to connect to the brain through a hole in the retina. So the eyes of all vertebrates have a small blind spot right near the middle of the visual field. Evolution starts with what's already there, tinkers with it and modifies it, but can never do a grand redesign. So even the eye, with all of its optical perfection, has clues to the fact that its origin is of the blind process of natural selection. Darwin believed that what he called an organ of extreme complexity, like the eye, could evolve by small steps, given enough time. Any trait that improved vision would aid in the search for food, or a mate, or in the avoidance of predators. So natural selection would most certainly favor those traits. And what Darwin was able to do was to point out that you might think in logic that it's difficult to imagine a set of intermediary stages between the simplest little spot of nerve cells that can perceive light to a lens forming eye that makes complex images. But in fact, these intermediary forms do exist in nature. 